from New York City, the makers of Clipper Craft Clothes for Men, and more than 1,200 leading retail stores from coast to coast, present Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's immortal character, the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes, starring John Stanley. This week's story, Murder on a Wager. There's the dead body, Holmes, washed up on the beach. Yes, Watson. Obviously drowned, I should say. Yes, quite. Yet the death is not as simple as it would seem, Watson. I should say our two visitors to Monte Carlo, our two brilliant criminals, have concocted a special brew for me. I should say... Quick, behind that tree. What do you see? A shadow with a gun. Get down, Watson! I... <laughs> I'm sure you've overheard people say, who is that handsome man? Well, now, of course, everybody can't be handsome, but every man can look his very best, and it does not cost you a lot of money. The secret is this. Get a perfectly styled Clippercraft suit and top coat, and you're the best-dressed man in any group. A Clippercraft all-worsted suit in smart spring patterns at only $45... Makes your shoulders look broader, your waist trimmer. Gives you that tapered-down athletic appearance. Makes you feel important. And then topped off with a beautiful all-wool covert cloth or gabardine clippercraft top coat at forty-two fifty. Well, people will say, who is that handsome man? Clippercraft clothes look like they should cost much more, and they would too. Except that more than 1,200 independent merchants have pooled their tremendous buying power to make Clippercraft's low prices possible. Compare Clippercraft yourself with clothes costing many dollars more. Dr. Watson, you've titled this evening's adventure Murder on a Wager. But but who would commit such a murder? It does seem an extraordinary motivation, doesn't it, Mr. Hatz? Well, it was a summer evening in the late 1890s. We were at our flat at 221B Baker Street. We had a call. You uh, represent the bank at Monte Carlo, Monsieur Guillaume? I do, Monsieur Holmes. Uh, most remarkable spot, Monte Carlo. I'm terribly curious to know what prompts this visit, Mr. Guillaume. I am extending an invitation to you, Dr. Watson, and to Monsieur Holmes to visit Monte Carlo. At our expense, of course, and for whatever fee you wish to name. Surely not to admire the scenic beauties. Uh, no, Monsieur Holmes. Uh, we anticipate trouble. What sort of trouble do you expect? Are you acquainted with the names of Roger Douglas and George Anatriot? Oh, Roger Douglas, renowned gambler, isn't he? Yes, Watson. As for George Anatriot, he's an incredible character. A Greek. Douglas's counterpart in the Near East. Given to wagers of gigantic sums, oh, not always upon cards or dice or chemin de fer. Rather on curious events and feats of daring. Uh, we maintain a secret service for the bank, Monsieur Holmes. And they told us that... For the very first time, these two treacherous gentlemen, Douglas and Anatrios, will meet. And at Monte Carlo. Each, of course, with his entourage of double dealers and professional killers. Exactly. Hmm. I should enjoy the spectacle. Uh, both gentlemen are experts at every conceivable form of gambling. We wonder, therefore, when the two meet, what game they will play. Might they make a wager of some sort that would endanger the interest of the bank? Might they join forces against us? We fear that the meeting of these two may lead to a disaster. We implore you to join us, Monsieur Holmes. Hmm. Hardly necessary to implore me, sir. Since this is a meeting of supremely sharp minds, it would be hard to keep me away. Let us prepare our luggage for a trip to Monte Carlo, Watson. Mr. Douglas? Yes, Mr. Anatrios? I am delighted to meet you. The moment I heard you were coming here to Monte Carlo, I was most anxious to see you. Thank you. You know Miss Deborah Stevens, I believe? I know George very well. We're old friends. Uh, we miss you, Deborah. Uh, Deborah lived in Athens and Constantinople for some time. She and I were uh, very close. I first met her when she was dancing professionally. We'll all miss her soon. She's to be married. I thought you wouldn't mind my bringing Deborah to this meeting. We require a witness for whatever wager we shall make, or whatever game you choose to play. Oh, I am so pleased you did bring her, Mr. Douglas. Uh, shall we close the door and begin? 
most uh, considerate of the management to provide this private room for our game. As you may see, Mr. Anatrios, the management has provided us with equipment to play whatever we choose. <laughs> Your naivete is charming, Mr. Douglas. Why do you say that? It would be extremely dull for either of us to indulge in a contest of an ordinary sort. We would merely exhaust ourselves, only to end with a negligible gain of a few thousand pounds by one or the other. Well, then what on earth did you expect to play, George? I do not know, Deborah. Perhaps together, Mr. Douglas and I may conceive of a game or wager of truly fabulous stakes of infinite excitement. I have a suggestion that might intrigue you. Yes? Did you know that at this moment Mr. Sherlock Holmes is on his way here to Monte Carlo? Uh, certainly. Mr. Holmes has a magnificent reputation as a criminologist. Well, Roger, what of it? Mr. Holmes's mission is undoubtedly to prevent either of us from committing a crime. Mr. Anatrios, I will wager whatever sum you wish on the fact that you cannot commit a crime of whatever nature you specify and elude Mr. Holmes. In short, that you cannot commit a crime while he is in this city and go scot-free. Wonderful suggestion. I accept. Witness, Deborah? Yes, Roger. To make the wager even more alluring, I shall allow you to name the sum and the crime. Fifty thousand pounds? One hundred thousand. Agreed. And the crime? No pedestrian crime will do. It must be a major crime. Arson on a gigantic scale, embezzlement for an enormous sum, or better yet, murder. Whatever you like. I control a great and efficient organization. I have years of experience in these matters. My performance should be inspired <laughs> sufficiently to baffle uh, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Yes, Anatios. Murder. Roger, you're going too far. I thought you two would play a very exciting game of cards or, or wage a battle together against the bank. But murder... Uh, for your uh, 100,000 pounds, uh, do you have a potential victim? Yes, I believe I do. Have you heard of Leslie Dixon? Dixon, Dixon. Uh, yes, a magician. I, I've seen him at cabarets. He is no longer a magician. I discovered he had a more valuable talent for manufacturing. Oh, manufacturing? Yes, he had designs for wheels, bird cages, marked packs of cards, where the results would always be in my favor. I placed him in business. But why do you want Leslie killed, Roger? He wants considerably more money. Oh. He's threatened to go to the newspapers. Of course, I can't afford that. Nor could you, Anatrios. It would keep the public away from our houses. Mm, this uh, Leslie Dixon is a very tempting victim. He's here, now, in Monte Carlo. Oh, Leslie Dixon will be dead by midnight of one week from tonight, when Sherlock Holmes fails to identify the murderer and returns to London, defeated. I shall meet you on the evening of his departure, in this same room, where you will pay a hundred thousand pounds to me. Uh, cash, of course. Agreed? Agreed. Ready for your evening swim, Mr. Dixon? Uh, yes, Reynolds. Uh, have my dressing gown and towels ready, as usual. Yes, sir. They're back in the cottage, sir. I'll fetch them. It's lovely tonight here on the beach, isn't it? Yes, Mr. Dixon. I shall return within the customary half hour, sir. Fine, Reynolds. Now for the dip. How is it, sir? Water's wonderful. I see you later. I'm swimming out toward the raft. Very well, sir. I'll be at the party. Ah. My legs. Cramp. My legs. Get... Re Reynolds! Oh, my... my head. Dizzy. Dizzy. My legs. I can't swim. Re Reynolds! Help! Help! There is the body of Monsieur Dixon, Monsieur Holmes. Washed ashore here on the beach, just as the police found it. Bewildering, eh, Holmes? They say Dixon was in perfect physical condition. Superb swimmer. The sea was very calm. No signs of violence. What do you make of it? You've uh, interviewed the butler, Monsieur Guillaume? Uh, the police did so, yes. He failed to hear anything. If Dixon called for help as he drowned, the butler was out of earshot. He might simply have developed a sudden cramp. 
Eh, who? A rather doubtful, Watson. A thoroughly experienced swimmer would not enter the water immediately after having eaten anything that might cause a cramp. Uh, especially Monsieur Dixon. He was most careful about food. Uh, uh, go me. I see. No, Watson, I'd say this is directly concerned with a visit to Monte Carlo of Messrs. Douglas and Anatrios. It would appear that the two geniuses of crime have concocted a special rule for me. I'd say... Quick, behind those trees. What is it? What do you see? A shadow with a gun. Get down! <laughs> It's amazing what people can do working together. For instance, more than 1,200 independent merchants pool their tremendous buying power and thus make possible Clippercraft, America's greatest clothing values. These friendly hometown businessmen know that to get and keep your friendship, they have to give you more for your money. And when you get a new spring Clippercraft worsted suit for only $45, an all wool covert cloth top coat for $40, or an all-wool Clippercraft gabardine top coat for forty-two fifty. You're getting the most for your money. Clippercraft clothes take their name from the famous Clipper ships that established honest New England quality everywhere in the world. Yet they're as modern as the Clipper planes that fly around the world today. Yes, you can trust Clippercraft clothes, and you can trust the men who sell them. That's why men who know insist on Clippercraft clothes bearing the Clippercraft label. So be sure to visit the Clipper Craft store in your city. These leading stores in the metropolitan area are proud to add their names to Clipper Craft in your suits and top coats. In Manhattan, John Wanamaker Men's Stores, Broadway at 8th and 67 Liberty Street, Saks 34th, Broadway at 34th, in Brooklyn, Abraham and Strauss, in Newark, New Jersey, Boulevard Men's Shop, Kresge Newark, and in Jamaica, the B&B Clothes Shop, 16408 Jamaica Avenue. Dr. Watson, Dr. Watson, shall we return to the murder committed on a wager? Yes, Mr. Harris, and to Monte Carlo, where on the beach in the moonlight we stood beside the dead body of Leslie Dixon. As Holmes bent over to examine the body, shots rang out from behind a tree. We fell flat upon our faces in the sand. When the firing ceased, I ran toward the trees from where the bullets had come. And as I returned... See anyone, Watson? No, oh, Holmes. They've, they've escaped. Just vanished into the darkness. Oh, it is Anitrius and Douglas. They are after you, Monsieur Holmes. They are afraid you will solve the murder. Yes, their fears are well grounded. I suggest the body be removed. I shall be interested in the results of an autopsy. Autopsy? Yes. But it is obvious that Dixon died of drowning. Nevertheless, I urge an autopsy. I have good reason. I shall so instruct the police. They are most cooperative with requests made by the bank. Good. And as for me, I shall discuss this case with someone well qualified in these matters. Mr. Anitrius. But he has just attempted to kill you. Now you would walk into his hands. Physical defeat has never frightened me, sir. It's the danger of mental defeat that lures me to whatever Natrios has planned. Coming, Watson? Oh, dazzling crowd, eh, Holmes? Princes, millionaires, cabinet officials, diplomats. See the Indian Raja in the ruby-trimmed headdress there? Irrelevant, Watson. We business with Mr. Anatrios. Oh, uh, uh, croupier said table three. Ah, oh, yes. Wouldn't that be he? Mr. Anatrios. Good evening, Mr. Holmes. Oh, I'm complimented that my face is internationally familiar. I've been expecting you. Shall we step into that private room? I wouldn't. If I were you, Holmes. You are upset by something, Dr. Watson? Yes, I certainly am, sir. If I were you, Holmes, I... I accept your invitation, Mr. Anatrios. Oh, uh, before we step into the room, uh, would you like to hold my gun, Dr. Watson? Well, well... Here, here, perhaps it would put you at ease, huh? By Jove, I will take it. Excellent. After you, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. I shall save a great deal of time for you, Mr. Holmes. I did not kill Leslie Dixon. Didn't you? I was in the gambling rooms at the time of his death. For two hours previous to that, I enjoyed dinner at the Hotel Maurice. I can produce a dozen witnesses to that effect. Yes, I'd no doubt you'd have a flawless explanation. Uh, previous to dinner, I attended a lawn party. Again, as many unimpeachable witnesses as you like. I see. I'm curious, Mr. Natrios, 
about the game you played or the wager you made with Roger Douglas last night. Could it in any way have been connected with the death of Leslie Dixon? Very directly. I wagered Mr. Douglas that I could murder Leslie Dixon in such a way that you, yes, you, Holmes, would never succeed in proving I had committed the homicide. The sum, 100,000 pounds. Astonishing! Of all the effrontery, throwing the gauntlet in your face, Holmes. Now, really, this... <laughs> Very amusing. Well, well th there's the motive, Holmes. <laughs> there's your man. I see no reason for concealing the wager. Besides, it would be unjust of me to collect. I did not kill Dixon. I intended to, yes, but I was late. I hadn't even started my plans when I had the news of his death. Hadn't you? Perhaps it's a move by Roger Douglas. He wanted Dixon to die. He suggested the wager. He might eliminate me that way as a competitor. His own men execute the crime in their own manner, being sure it's done properly. The guilt would seem to be mine. Oh, Mr. Douglas. You know Mr. Holmes, uh, Dr. John Watson. Uh, how do you do? We were discussing the late Mr. Dixon. Really? I was at the theater when he died. Can you prove that, sir? Of course, Dr. Watson. I can prove my whereabouts throughout the entire evening. I told Mr. Holmes about our wager. You did? Why shouldn't I? Aren't you writing an invitation to the gallows for yourself? <laughs> Not at all. Mr. Holmes must produce concrete evidence before I lose. Uh, evidently, he's finding it uh, impossible. Oh, quite the contrary. Uh, we're leaving, Watson. May I offer my carriage, Mr. Holmes? Uh, thank you, no. I don't believe it's much of a walk to the morgue. Uh, the, the morgue, Holmes? Yes, Watson. If you'll excuse us, gentlemen, I must visit the morgue. The dead, you see, are often more articulate than the living. <laughs> Where's the body on that slab, Holmes? The police surgeon said you could examine whatever you wished. Yes. I see they've already performed the autopsy. Dixon drowned, Holmes. Well, what the Dickens are you probing about for? His lungs there show clearly that he was drowned. Yes. And why did he drown? Aha, uh -huh, as I thought. Well, what do you see? I see that I must pay a visit to the late Mr. Dixon's cottage. Well, Holmes, if you insist upon being secreted... You, Watson, return to the casino. Keep an eye on Anitrios and his associates. I shall meet you at the casino very shortly with a thorough explanation of the murder and the identity of the killer. Thank you, driver. That was indeed fast enough. Well, Holmes, I've been waiting for you here on the steps of the casino for two hours. Did you go to Dixon's cottage, speak to the butler? What, what have you found? Where are Anitrius and Douglas and their crew? Well, they're having cigars and brandy on the terrace. This way, it's the terrace on the cliff, uh, overlooking the sea. Harry Watson, we must find them. I have the evidence. You have? Yes. Where is it? Here, in my hand. In your hand? What is it? This small bottle of salad oil. <coughs> There they are, Holmes, with that girl, the table by the railing. Oh, yes, I see you. I regret disturbing you, gentlemen. Oh, Mr. Holmes, uh, you've met Mr. Douglas. This is Deborah Stevens. How do you do? How do you do, do, you do Miss Stevens? I presume, Mr. Holmes, you have some sort of evidence you believe will prove I killed Leslie Dixon? Uh, no, Mr. Anetrios, your remarkable instincts are wrong for once. Then I'm sure, Mr. Holmes, you are prepared to accuse me, believing I carried out the crime having engineered it so that an Atrios would suffer for it. No, Mr. Douglas. But, but, but Holmes, one of them can... Neither of them, my dear Watson. The, the butler? Nor the butler. Mr. Leslie Dixon was killed by you, Miss Stevens, <gasps> with this innocent-looking small bottle of salad oil. Where did you find that? You know what you are talking about, Holmes. It was obvious someone had contrived for Dixon to drown. But how? There was no external evidence of violence... No, the sole possibility was that he'd been given something internally. In all likelihood, something that would cause him to lose control of his arms and legs, that would cause unconsciousness. So that when he set off on his nightly swim alone, he'd drown. Stay where you are, Miss Stevens. I've had my service revolver along this trip. I knew I'd have use for it. Go on, Holmes. So I insisted upon an autopsy. It revealed to me that Dixon's stomach lining was affected by an extreme irritant. It confirmed my suspicion. Dixon was subtly poisoned. I won't listen to this. I... You'd better, Miss Stevens. It's your death warrant. I raced to Dixon's cottage. I spoke with the butler. I inquired about what Mr. Dixon had had for dinner prior to his swim. 
His dinner included a salad prepared with a small bottle of oil. This bottle, which had been presented that afternoon as a gift to Mr. Dixon by Miss Deborah Stevens. This oil contains an overdose of camphor. Camphor, Holmes? What sort of diabolical notion? Camphor, as you know, Watson, is soluble in oil, but not in water. The salad oil was a magnificent idea. The minute amounts of camphor could easily be blended with other flavors and odors, so its presence might not be detected. Yeah, but I have all this... Shut up! Way... Shut up, all of you! Camphor, Miss Stevens, is obtainable easily at a chemist's, isn't it? There's no suspicion of poison when you purchase camphor, is there? And just a bit too much of it will cause leg cramps and dizziness. Will it not, Miss Stevens? Stop it! And an autopsy might well be a routine drowning report without evidence of poisoning. Am I correct, Miss Stevens? Yes. Yes, you're quite right. At one time or another, she's been associated with all kinds of men. Lord knows what sort of mess she was in with Dixon. I was to be married next week. Dixon knew about where I've been and what I've been. He was very much in love with me. Ever since we met when I was dancing in cabarets and he did his magic act. I loathed him. Every time I had a chance to marry, he would speak to my fiancé and break it up. He was going to do it again. So you couldn't wait, could you, Miss Stevens? You couldn't wait for Mr. Anatrias to eliminate Dixon. Besides, it was an ideal circumstance. If there were any suspicion of murder, it would point to Anatrias. Yes, but Holmes, the shots are on the beach. Fired by you, Miss Stevens, to create the impression that an organized gang was responsible. I won't go to prison. Dixon won't have another victory over me. I won't allow his death to send me to even more misery. No, I, I won't go. Here, let go. Let go of my revolver. I yeah, would get her away from you. And she's tripped. She's falling back over the rail. <laughs> oh, fisherman down below said Miss Stevens' body struck the rocks. Floated out to see her. Yes, a more satisfactory finish for her, Watson, I dare say. Avoiding the long, painful trial and inevitable execution. Now, Mr. Natrios, Mr. Douglas, if you'll excuse me. Uh, returning to London, Mr. Holmes? Yes, and to Baker Street. But before I go, gentlemen, I propose a toast. A toast, sir? Yes. To George Natrios and Roger Douglas, two surprisingly pleasant scoundrels. To our next meeting. To your next fantastic wager. <laughs> Well, Dr. Watson, that was a very gripping adventure. Indeed it was, Mr. Harris. And what adventure have you for us next week, Doctor? I have called it The Adventure of the Unfortunate Ballot. It concerns a medical diagnosis, a restless corpse, and a domestic quarrel. Makers of Clippercraft clothes and more than 1,200 stores from coast to coast have brought you another in the new series of broadcasts featuring the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Our stories are based upon the character Sherlock Holmes, created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and the program is produced and directed by Basil Lockrin. Sherlock Holmes is played by John Stanley, Dr. Watson by George Spelvin. This week's story was written by Howard Merrill with special music by Albert Berman. If you don't know your Clippercraft dealer, write Clippercraft, 200 Fifth Avenue, New York City. A happy birthday to the Girl Scouts. March 12th is your 37th anniversary. You and Girl Scouting are important, and we salute all of you all over America. Sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes in The Adventure of the Unfortunate Ballot. This is Cy Harris speaking for Clippercraft Clothes. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.